Messiah, Jesus Christ, comes to his own. His own receives him not. I, but I'm not God. I, but I'm not Jesus. I wouldn't have went back. Now, I don't know what you would have done. You know, sometimes folks can hurt you so bad you don't want no more parts of it. Am I right or wrong? You don't even want to fool with them again. People are just that low down, that harmful. And you say, I don't even want to look at you. You had no business doing that to me. Here, the inside, the world, he was in the world, 10 of John 1. And the world was made by him. Come on, y'all. And the world knew him not. Here is almighty God. You wouldn't have oxygen if it wasn't for him. He's the one who threw the sun and made it stay there. He's the one who, who dotted the celestial host with stars. This is the almighty God who created mankind, not from the mud, but from the dust of the earth. He is almighty God that pulled woman out of the womb of man. I, I want you, out of the rib of man. I want you to understand that he is almighty God. Almighty God coming to his own. Almighty God coming, and they got the audacity to reject him. I wouldn't have gone back. Now, I want you to know that somebody's listening by the sound of my voice. You've done wrong, and mama's giving up on you. Somebody say it now. See, mama give up on you. You can go so far that even mama will give up on you. See, there's something you can do that is so scandalous that old hard daddy, daddy, give up on you. All you got to do is go to the jail cell. There are some individuals whose crimes are so outlandish, even mama can't go see them anymore. Daddy said, I don't have a son. There's a picture of a man in Mark chapter 5 that was in that scope. Everybody gave up on him. But Jesus went through a storm to get there. I want you to know God is willing to go through a storm to get to you. Check that out when you get time. That's Mark chapter 4, verse, verse 35. He said, peace be still. The disciples thought they were going to die. You go on the back around to about verse 33, 34. He said, let us go on to the other side. They all got on the boat. Don't know really where they're going. They're going with Jesus, going to the other side. And Jesus was going to meet the man that nobody else wanted to meet. I want you to understand the power of Almighty God. I want you to understand that if you listen to the sound of my voice, it's the Holy Spirit that pressed you this way. I want you to understand that if you're in this sanctuary right now, it's the power of the Holy Spirit that's pressed you this way. I, I, I want you to hear a few points. Am I helping anybody? I want you to hear a few points of grace, and, and then I'm out of here. First thing I want you to understand, grace is always near. The goodness of God is always near. I want you to hear that gospel there. I, I, I mean, I, I might preach that. I ain't no need to teach that. The goodness of God is right there when you need him to be. The goodness of God is closer than your cell phone. And you know you always had your cell phone. The goodness of God is more accurate than 911. And you know you can always dial 911 if you live in the good part of town. And they're going to always answer. I, I'm talking about the grace of Almighty God. It's always near. When's the last time you didn't see the sunshine? When, when is the last time you didn't see nightfall? When is the last time there was no oxygen in the air? When, when is the last time, if your body is working the way it needs to work, when is the last time you couldn't see out of your own two eyes? When is the last time you couldn't lift your baby with your own two hands? I'm talking about there are things in the natural that we expect to show up. We expect to be near. But I want you to know that grace... It's always near. I don't care what you're going through. You better look for grace. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no. Why? Thy rod and thy staff, they come for me. See, and then you go down to the latter part of that 23rd Psalm. It says, goodness and mercy shall all the days of my. Did that mean Monday? Lunas, 
Martez, <laughs> all the days of my life, man. I've been living 50 years. I had 50 years of grace. I've been living 80 years. I got 80 years of grace. I've been living 90 years, two weeks, seven days, three hours. All of that time, grace has been near. I want you to understand that. I don't know what situation you're in. I don't know what circumstance you're going through. But I want you to know all you need is to see grace. Look here. Jesus came to his own. That was John chapter 1 verse 10. The world was created by him. He came to his own. His own knew him what? They didn't recognize him. I want you to know you got grace all around you. You don't even recognize it. You get so caught up in what did happen. You forget to praise him for what didn't happen. It, how many people are breathing this morning? You better know that's grace. If, if you are in the land of the living, I don't care if you're in a jail cell. You got grace on display. I don't care if you're in a hospital room hooked up to all types of equipment. You have, you have grace on display in your life. If you're riding the city bus, you got if you're in a binge, you got. If you're in a Rolls Royce, you got. If you're walking on Ike and Mike, you got. You better understand you got grace. Thank God for them shoes you're walking on. Thank God that your legs can walk like that. See, you, there, there's always grace. But I want to bring this deeper than that. I want to bring it deeper. Because somebody needs a powerful move of God in their lives. Somebody, this brother who came, this nobleman, who came to Jesus, he didn't come to Jesus for some old feel-good stuff. He didn't come to Jesus to get another dollar in his pocket. He didn't come to Jesus to be elevated as a member of society. He came to Jesus because his child was ill. His child was dying. There's no other help I know but God Almighty. I want you to look at 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Now, somebody came to study with me. If you came to study, then you might like City of Faith Church. If you don't want to study, find somebody else that's going to holler and scream. You don't have to come. But if you come over here, you better get your Bible. You better get ready to study, okay? Look here, though. Because I want you to see this thing. 13, that have no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Hey, hey, here's what, look here. Whatever you're going through, you ain't the first one to go through it. Now, come on, pick your head up. Whatever you're going through and whatever you need to overcome, I want you to understand you're not the only one to overcome that. There's no one-time miracle. You're not going to be the first one in history to overcome a miracle, to need a miracle, to overcome a barrier in your life. Uh, but, but hey, come on, come on, let's, let's keep on reading though. Taking you by such as common to man. But God is faithful. Look at this now. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. You just stay with it. I told you grace is always there. But, with, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Now listen to what that word said. That word saying that there's a share of trouble in life for all of us. There's an opportunity to do right, an opportunity to do wrong that will come all of our ways. And sometimes the, the external force can be so great against us, it feels that we have no choice but to buckle under its load. And what the word says here is God will always give you a way of escape. Well, preacher, paraphrase that. Break that down one more time. All right, what it says is, in the most impossible situation, God always has to allow possibility to exist. I want you to hear that thing. Over there in Luke chapter 18, verse 27, it says what is, what's, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Over there in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it says he can do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask all. I'll imagine. So what I want you to understand here, it says wherever death exists, God says life will be there also. You better hear that gospel. Wherever death exists, God says life must be there also. 
Wherever you are faced with an impossible situation, God says, I must also put possibility there. 